So good morning, Shivda, and all the teachers present today. Say Taimar Jaipuria School welcomes Mr. Shiv Kumar to the school to enlighten us with his thoughts and wisdom. Mr. Shiv Kumar is the Director, Indian Council for Integral Education at Sri Aurobindo Society and National Director of Oro Youth Wing of Sri Aurobindo Society, Puducherry. After completing his graduation in Mechanical Engineering, a Diploma in Computer Aided Design and a five-year stint in the corporate world, Mr. Shiv Kumar decided to turn his attention exclusively to an experiential understanding and practice of Indian spirituality. In the year 2001, he joined the Sri Aurobindo Society, Puducherry, and has since then been engaged in bringing about a deeper change in the field of education. He conducts workshops and camps on integral education for principals, educationists, teachers, parents, and students. Besides organizing camps and workshops, he has undertaken several projects in the field of education at Sri Aurobindo Society, Puducherry. Now I take this opportunity to invite Mr. Shiv Kumar on stage to spread true education which facilitates soul-directed growth. So can we have a please a big round of applause for Mr. Shiv Kumar. My welcome message. We are here today, I will broadly lay out what we are here because I am not going to share with you the techniques and the methodology of how education happens in the classroom because you are too good at it. But we are going to take a re-look at why we are doing what we are doing. Did you get me? Why we are doing what we are doing and from there we will come to understand, I see a familiar figure, <laughs> welcome. Then we will understand whether it needs any change or not how much do I feel that the change has to be there? Suppose if I feel so much that as if my life depended on this change, I am sure you will figure out a hundred ways of doing it somehow. As children, we were very good at it. If somebody says no to something, we will figure out how to do the exact same thing we were not allowed to do. And that is going to happen among the teachers too in a certain sense. But why do I say that this is this is a welcome message because this is something which the Supreme Court has come out with a statement. You are not able to, I will read it out for you because he is standing in the way. It has said in 2013, 5th July, it says education system has failed. And why has it failed? The underlined, the highlighted one, it is unfortunate that today education instead of reforming human behavior. What does the Supreme Court think we should do? We should teach so and so syllabus and then hope to be done with education. Very subtly the Supreme Court put it in, reforming the human behavior. Now what is the point in learning all those you know, PhDs in mathematics and physics and chemistry if it has not changed our character? If education changes our character, then I can make use of all these things and build a better society. I can become an engineer. If it has reformed my character, I become a better engineer. I can build roads and railways which will, in a certain sense, will help the humanity. But if it is not reformed, changed the human behavior for the better, then somewhere we are not doing justice to the word education. All of you agree with me? Yes? Are you still sleeping or <laughs> you are all awake, right? Okay. The first thing started yesterday when I was in an assembly and uh, I just wanted to interact with the children. So I just asked them and I told them, you know, sometimes I say something and then I suffer for it. So I told them school is a place where you discover or where you are allowed to do what you really, really want to do. And then that is what I said. Then I just asked them that what is it that they want to do? So I was hoping that some, somebody would say music, dance, drama and then one child is, said, do you know what she said? I want to sleep a little more. <laughs> Poor thing, I don't know, probably in the house she is going to bed a little late. So I have told, so I have to say that in my school if you join, then I will definitely make the first period for you to sleep. But when she wakes up, she will give herself completely to that character building process. Yes or no? So, 
Any of you here need to go to sleep? Feel free. <laughs> no? You are awake. Fine. So here is the thing that it says, reforming human behavior in our humble opinion appears to have failed to achieve its objective. They did not say that we failed in engineering, we failed in medicine, because look at all the hospitals and the amount of technology that has come up. If you go to the hospital, they will make you experience all the technology available. Even if you go with a simple headache, you, you will have had a taste of all the technology and also you will have an experience of how much each doctor has learnt because he is going to exercise it on you. You know, MBBS, how long does it take? Four or five years. And then if you want to go and become MD? Seven, eight. So when you go to him, he is not going to let you go without giving you a taste of seven years of whatever he has learnt. We don't lack technology. What is it that we are lacking? Something which will make technology useful and worthwhile for us and that is the reforming of human behavior. Appears to have failed to achieve its objective Instant, instead, we find a troubled atmosphere in society at large which calls for an immediate reformation. And this is what the Supreme Court has felt. Do you kind of in general agree with it? Because I am asking you, this school is a little different. I have already had a taste of it. It is not similar to the conventional schools. Already I can feel that the children are more joyous. But in general, overall, the way education happens, would you agree with it or not? In a general way? Now, why does it happen? So there are somebody who prepared a syllabus for us and then probably given it to us. And they told us, this is all that you need to t teach. Does anybody say that if you want, you can teach? So does any of the syllabus tell you that if you want, you can, you can do this syllabus. Otherwise, you are the one who is with child. You know the child best. So you figure out what is best for the child. Does syllabus tell you that? No? Who makes the syllabus? It comes to you from the principal, but she doesn't make it. Even, you know, she's also in the same boat as everybody else. She doesn't also have the liberty. She can't decide what is to be done. It is prepared by somebody sitting perhaps thousands of miles away and they are here to tell us what we are supposed to do on this particular day, at this particular time. For example, what was the period announced? The second period. Third period. So from the third period, this is what you are supposed to do. That is what we have ended up with. If we have to change it, how do we change it? I am going to tell you one way of attempting that but it depends on you how much you feel towards it. Every great revolution in this world, take it for example French Revolution, it has started with one person. It is not that the collective community as a whole suddenly said we want revolution in France. It started with one person and how did it, because we are talking nothing short of a tremendous revolution in the educational field. How does it happen? Because one person did not feel that I want to change. He always started with, complete my sentence, he always started with getting himself an idea, concept. idea, concept. It always starts with a dream. What type of dream? We all de dream dreams, isn't it? Everybody feels, uh, experiences dreams at night? Sometimes we remember. There are certain dreams which keep coming again and again. I want to ask you, does anybody have such experience? Because when I was a child, there was a particular type of dream which used to repeat over, it will come in a couple of times in any year and the next year also it will repeat. And when I look back, I could see that what I am, where I am now is kind of indicated to me in that dream because it resonated with me so much when I was a child. I held on to that dream and I allowed the dream to grow in me so much so that it started changing the way I think and the way I feel. 
So whenever I did something contrary to it, this dream was not allowing me to feel the satisfaction. Why? It's not a dream anymore. It has started overpowering my thoughts and my emotions. So it is simply not allowing me to feel satisfied with anything else. And you remember when in America, probably much earlier, 60s, when there was an oppression of black Americans, one person stood up and then he gave a beautiful talk which is titled, I have a dream. Who is it? Martin Luther King. He has not worked out everything when he was dreaming because you need to allow the dream to become complete and then allow it to overpower your thoughts and your emotions and when it has completely consumed you, then when you are left with nothing else but that, then you step out and say, why I want to do is because I can't do anything else. And that is the power of this dream. And today, as I told you, I'm not going to give you methods and techniques of what to do in class because you are already masters of it. They all call you as masters, right? Or teachers. Facilitators, what do you call yourself? Educators. Educators. So today is a day where we need to discover our dream and we need to strengthen our dream and then a process of changing our thoughts and emotions will begin if we are convinced that this is the dream that we have to realize in our life. And what is a dream? Simple. Reformation of human behavior. Reforming education. Simple dream? Simple dream? Are you not even nodding? This, this is a very passive group. I know for one that in our education we expect children to be very passive and the more passive he is the better student he is because he doesn't tell anything against what you have to say he only says yes ma'am or yes miss or yes didi and we have been I know I know I'm coming to that when I say we not in this so I'm making this school as an exception for all the general examples I'm giving okay so throughout our education, from at least class 1 to 10, in a certain sense, teacher is supposed to teach and the student is supposed to, to listen and try to understand and not to question, not to question why you are teaching me what you are teaching me. Among this, in this school, has any of the child asked you the question, how many mathematics teachers are here? Has any of your children asked you, why do you teach me mathematics? Interesting. Physics? You have physics, chemistry, biology. From 7th uh, onwards, you have that difference. Otherwise, it is science, right? Physics? One, two, three. Have you encountered this question? Ma'am, why do you teach me physics? No. Why do you teach me? I don't know. Bernoulli's theorem? No. What theorems are there? Give me a name of a couple of... Can you tell me a couple of uh, points from there? Why are we teaching physics? They give different formats like uh, to see things around you, observe, question and then lay down a hypothesis and then a law and all that kinds of things in class. Second one. Has any of the children told you that, sorry, I'm, I can't understand what you are saying. So can you teach me in a different way? It will be directly challenging. It will almost be telling the teacher that, no, your technique is not working me. You better go and learn better techniques. Has any, any of the students told you? Yes, no? Please teach me differently. I am not able to understand. So this is something which will work. Why is it that? Simply because children are different and therefore one method, one syllabus will not work. So first of all, one syllabus will not work. Second, one method and technique is not going to work with everybody. And also one way of communicating, communication is not going to work with everybody. Simply, if we want to make it child-centered, we will come to that a little later. When we go a little bit into that dream, we have a school in Delhi, little outside of Delhi, Gnostic Center. Have you heard of that school? We are attempting uh, integral education over there. There is a group of people who are there. One day, 
This is a conversation which happened between a teacher and a student. The child was probably 12 years old, 12 or 11 or 12 years old. So one day he went up to the teacher and asked him that uh, they, they call their teachers as Didi. So he said, Didi, you are always telling me that I should write the exams well, I could get good marks, but uh, why don't you ask me whether I slept well or not the previous day? The moment all the children come to your classroom, they have just been through a beautiful experience of sleep and then they rushed, of course, to this place. Why don't you ask me what I dreamt during my sleep? Are dreams important? How important? As important as creating a French revolution, as important as liberating the black Americans because it happened through Martin Luther King. As teachers, Shouldn't we recognize their dreams? Yes or no? And if we recognize their dreams, we will be able to become better teachers? Yes? Now that is how important. Why is it that you don't ask me how... Did anybody here for the first period ask their children how did they sleep? How did they eat? I'm sure some of you must be doing. Have you ever done it? Do you do it consistently? Once in a week? When I see a child, I Interesting. She says when he detects a problem, then she wants to know. Otherwise, we already are a little short of time, isn't it? Suppose if you ask, how many children are there on an average in your 40? Imagine if you start the day with, did you sleep well? Did you dream well? And the child opens up and starts sharing the dream that they had. How long is the period here? 45 minutes? 35 minutes? Do you think 35 minutes will be enough to complete this one thing? And then if you go still further, that how many have noticed whether they are breathing properly? Is breathing important for the child's well-being? Yes. Is it important for his educational process? Have we ever got ourselves concerned with it? As she noticed, when there is a problem, we notice. But as part of his well-being, have you ever noticed whether somebody is taking a deep breath, somebody is taking shallow breath? Have you ever ob observed it? How important is breathing to us? Is it a reflection of something? When you have short breaths, what does it mean? Anxiety, stress. Something is being hurried. And therefore, you go like, whoosh, 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 like, like a dog. And if, how should breathing be? Deep and long and relaxed. Deep doesn't mean that you start taking in and then like a balloon it fills up and at some point you feel the pressure. No. Deep and long and relaxed. If it's not relaxed, we start from a little bit and then we kind of increase it. Breathing is important. Sleep is important. Dreams are important. And finally, I don't know how I am growing or what I am meant to be. Sometimes, these children know when they come to their classes, I'm giving you an adult perspective and a child's perspective. An adult facilitator's teacher's perspective is, I have a syllabus which I want to finish, lesson plan is ready. From a child's perspective, when a child enters into a classroom, what is the attitude with which he comes? Come on, we have all been children. And at some point, we would have felt like something, at least in the first period, after that we get into the groove. Is there anything that the children want to do as soon as they get into the classroom? Full of energy? Talking? See, they are creatures who are bundles of energy. And at that age, 11, 12, 13, they are having experiences sometimes for the first time in their life. Probably a child saw a rainbow and he is... Um, taken up, completely blown away by that spectacle, it was too magical and with that impression of magic when he comes, he wants to express it or it could also happen that he has just has had a nice, you know, one of its kind 
latest brand of ice cream. It came there in the market, new flavor, and then he tasted it, and it, the, the saliva is already dripping in his mouth. He just had it the previous day. He wants to talk about it. He wants to express it. Because without it, his experience is not complete. And he wants to complete the experience before he can move on to something else. And if we don't give that opportunity, we are taking him out of his experience. Or it could be a football commentary. Recently there was a World Cup football. And I don't know why it happened so, but it happened. Always all the matches, important ma matches happened at midnight. So our disadvantage is the advantage of Russia. They had it nicely, but if any of the children got into it, when they came to the classroom, I didn't have it. Did you ask? Most of them watched the football. Such an exciting event. And uh, this person and uh, Ronaldinho is there and uh, this person, there are so many names and they have by hearted almost all the, they can tell you like that from which team, who is playing. When they come with that experience, because the experience, they are still living that experience, it is not completed when they come to it. Or a poetry that he has read yesterday, or the adventure that he had over the last weekend, or their, it's, it's a bundle of energy wanting to complete the experience. And somewhere, somehow, if we don't do it, we are denying the child of an experience which could have become complete. Now, usually our focus is on syllabus only when problems come. Of course, you pay attention to it. And simply because if you are not given a syllabus, would you ask this question to children? Sir, actually, we have a zero period. Uh, and invariably, all of us are not teaching in that zero period. Okay. And that is the interaction time for all of us. Okay. So what we all do, I think most of us do it, that if we find anything, generally anything, even when FIFA was sick. You just go ahead and ask him, what did he do? How was he? And then when it was? Individually, but generally, everybody comes up, yeah, and he did this, and he did that, and we kind of listen to that. But then, yes. After 20 minutes of this kind of uh, thing, then we get them to the structured The regular, yeah. the structured one. What we are trying to do here is to have an understanding of what we do and also a relative significance of what we are missing. And then we are going to arrive at what is it essential thing needed here as well as here and we are going to combine it. Suppose if we find that something which is shared here you feel resonating with it, it is more important and if the time is not available, we are going to reduce the time that is given to it a little bit. Because this is important, we are going to balance it out. So what you are going to do in the next one hour is a kind of a juggling where when we question why we teach what we teach, we will go a little deeper and then we will also ask what is it that we could bring in which is equally or even more important. If so, we will have to find a way of combining these two. So when we look into what we teach, there is a syllabus and there are lots of subjects and usually each subject starts with why the child will have to study and then we are going to go a little deeper into asking the question that who decided that these are the subjects and these should not be the subjects. Can we ask that question? There are already a lot of subjects which are available. Can you just um, give me a list of subjects that you have? So what we are going to do is, do you have a um, paper pen with you? You can even uh, take and create a table where we will just list out the subjects. Just an activity that. So 
four columns. Okay, first one we are going to list out at least some of the subjects and then we are going to ask ourselves how many number of pages that are there in that book that you are supposed to cover and you know approximately how many number of e hours you are given because you have to finish that syllabus, isn't it? And then something which will we will take up. Can you give me the names of the subjects that you cover? Mathematics? Language? Language and lit? Huh, languages, I put everything. Physics, chemistry, biology. And kind of history and geography? Huh. I think for our this much let us begin with it and then go a little deeper into it. Mathematics on an average you know from first standard to 10th standard will take up something like 6th, 7th, 8th or 9th standard approximately. You have a book to cover yes and uh, you are allowed to choose the book or the book is prescribed to you. You can choose the book. So approximately what is the number of pages in an year? Something like 150, 150 to 300? Mota Mota, approximately. So if 150 to 300, I will say around 200. In a week, you have at least um, 5 periods? Nine periods. So nine multiplied by you have five hours. Two hundred hours. Oh, that that makes it nice. Two hundred pages. Approximate. Yeah. Mota mota. <laughs> okay. We don't have to go into the details. I'm just taking one example. Mathematics, 200 pages, 200 hours. This is for one class. And suppose on an average, if I have to take classes from 1 to 10 or 1 to 12, you have plus. So if we take it on an average, and you take up all the books of mathematics, and then keep them one after the other, uh, what will be the approximate number of pages? If it's 200, higher classes will have more, lower classes will have 10, approximately 2000. So I did this exercise with CBSC syllabus and I found that classes 1 to 10, they have 1994, 2000 pages, somewhere around this one. But if you include class 1 and 12, it is, they have plus 1 and plus 2 have more top books. So it's around 3300. And the number of hours is 1,500 or 2,000. Approximately, we have 2,000 pages from class 1 to 10 and 2,000 hours from 1 to 10. Yes? Now, we are going to ask an average as a percentage. Would you have put it into practice or used it in your But first of all, you remember most of the things, right? How many here remember that beautiful theorem called second degree equation? You know second degree equation? Everybody has learnt it. I know the mathematics teachers here will put up. How many remember second degree equation? Put Non-mathematics teachers? What can any mathematics teacher tell what is second degree equation? You remember ax squared plus bx plus c equal to c and therefore x is equal to square root of uh, this. Mathematics teachers remember because they have to teach, isn't it? How many others even remember? One, two, three out of uh, 50 people are here? Four. So out of 50, four people remember. And out of them, did you apply this in anywhere in your life? 
on a motor motor we are just taking this group you know we are not even generalizing so we have taught 2000 pages i know i have used addition subtraction multiplication and something of a percentage you know when these people coming up with schemes you know uh, geo comes up with a scheme and airtel comes with a scheme I need percentage calculation on who gives me the best or any offer out of the 2000 pages honestly speaking how many pages of mathematics would you have utilized in your life when you go to purchase anything in the mall yes sir do you remember the second degree equation profit loss percentage how many pages can you can you say that see we are arriving at common minimum this is something everybody should read actually i actually pulled out the pages of from those 1994 1990, and then did this experiment it was as she said 50 pages addition subtraction multiplication some percentage and this and that profit and loss profit and loss absolutely then we calculated the sum yes yes this is for life i can't let go and i put it 45 pages is what come i'm being generous 50 pages okay here is the interesting thing here is the interesting thing so 2000 pages needed around 2000 hours 50 pages should take approximately how many hours common minimum essential everybody suppose if you have had an education where this is taught to us and then of course there are always some exceptional children who will ask for mathematics who love mathematics and somewhere they are meant to but when we give mathematics we are giving it as an information to them this is how you do it they pick up they can very well pick it up when they are grown up when it is needed for their work but coming back to it on a percentage so how much of what was taught to us did we was relevant to my life i'm not talking about general life okay to my life can you please write it honest so what i would what i would suggest is include that also except for mathematics teachers there are four five mathematics teachers so if it is needed for your professional life bring that in so as a percentage something was taught to you how much in a percentage was relevant to you did you actually use in your life for example 50 out of 2000 i have used in my life i have not used second degree equation and subset and this. there are so many other things so i would put it as mathematics teachers is it correct 50 out of 200 is 10 percentage 100 is 5 50 out of 2000 2.5% not even mota mota but precisely yes or no can you just look at your life and approximately because you have read so much how much did you actually utilized in your life personal or professional mathematics teachers will have a higher percentage for them i will suggest make a small differentiation how much did you use in your life outside of profession and how much in profession only for the mathematics teachers how much out of profession did you use when you went to the you know shop to purchase what mathematics formula and how many and how much would you have used it's a question have you written in a percentage you got the un um, understood yes see i have told you i needed only 50 pages covering basic mathematics and i can very well say that 2.5% of what i was taught was essential for me after that actually whenever i needed something here and there i did not remember what was taught to me i went to the internet and then taught myself because all that i had read it's already gone because 
just imagine 2000 pages of one subject and there are other subjects we are going to analyze and so much information cannot stay. It needs periodic emptying and it happens very well after the exam. After the exam you ask children, so do you remember all that and you will come to know such a release. Have you all noted down? Honestly, mathematics is an interesting one. <laughs> one of the reasons, one of the reasons I selected mathematics. Time out, time out. Time out. <laughs> one of the reasons why I chose mathematics is I am a hardcore lover of mathematics. <laughs> I am being partial to it, it's fine. Because from first standard I fell in love and then I had hit maximum throughout my career and then I ended up doing engineering because the mathematics was pushing me which is so because I love I have taken up and with all my love I am telling to a tough percentage. I don't know. That's yes, please write it down. Place it down. For me it is 2.5. For you it will be more. Huh. Right. So it's nothing like an upper limit or lower limit. Be truthful and then write it down. Has everybody written down? Those who have not written down, please put up your hand. Yes, in your life after you have finished your college education, then until now, how much of mathematics have you used in your life? I have been generous actually. Yeah, I said one, one point five. Calculations also done by computer. Which is not there. Talking about because then I would have preferred that I am taught computer rather than mathematics. That is not included. I can pay somebody to do the mathematics also. So that is not included. Making others do is not included. So have you written down? Yes. Okay. Okay. One percent. One percent. Just keep telling. If I require more, then I have to speak to the max teacher. Okay. How many have written more than 5%? Put up your hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Out of you, there are 3 plus 2, 5 people. How many have written more than 10%? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You are mathematics teachers. But even as a mathematics teacher, I have told you to write two things, life out of profession. So for you, what applies is life out of profession. Because for the sake of job, you mugged it up, you reread it, which is different. So now, how many are there above five in your life outside of profession? Are you still convinced outside of your life you have used more than five? Now more than ten outside of your profession? One person. Discovery of today. <laughs> Discovery of today. Mathematics teachers, because they engage more with mathematics, they have a better understanding. And when they look around, they can identify mathematics much more. Yes or no? And the maximum that we have is around 10% even among the mathematics teachers, the application. I am going to put it in a statement, only for mathematics will come to others also. In what I am teaching, if I am a mathematics teacher, 95% of what I am going to teach over a period of 1950 hours. How many hours? 1950 hours. The children are not going to put into practice in a general way. There are exceptions. And I have taken up only mathematics. Yes? Physics? No, how many use? See, how many you apply it through your mind? Mathematics is there everywhere. Physics. Now remember, I am going to relate it to all the things that you read in the book. So in physics, do you cover solar system? So how many have experienced a solar system? Every experience. 
we are not going to be poetical and then overflowing, but in a normal general way in our life, solar system, of course, if you are looking at your astrological chart, it comes directly into play in the, all the solar systems. But I've taken up one example just to make all of us realize the magnitude of 95%. So you include all the subject. I'm making one or two exceptions because they are most useful in our life. Language? That's why I wrote it down. Literature? Literature is beautifying and intensifying language. Language. Literature may or may not be. Physics, chemistry, when you are sitting on the chair, are you telling that, oh, this plastic, the chemical formula that I read is such a beautiful and therefore I am feeling in most comfortable? <laughs> it may fall? We may fall that the of this chair and the of this chair. Yeah. For which is chemistry needed or is part of your everyday experience? The person who made and conceived and designed and prepared a plastic might need it. If you go and ask him, he will say, all that I learnt is when the corporate gave me the first two years of training, that is the time I learned. Not that I remembered what I had read. Can you understand the magnitude of the problem? I would say 95, 90, even if it is 80% of what we teach to our children, to our own children, they are not going to be relevant for them at all. And then we ask why India is where it is today? Why is it not? up one of the top countries, why are we going ahead in all the fields in education and management and economics and sports and arts and music. And this after keeping away art, music, dance, drama as co-curricular or extracurricular. And then we understand if it is your child, would you send him to a place where 90% of what he learns is irrelevant to him? Honest, be honest. Now, I'm not, I'm going to come to that. Then why do we send? There are reasons. Why do we send? They need a degree. Why do they need a degree? They need a job. And we are going to ask ourselves from there also. So, whoever has said the syllabus? Do you think it is too difficult for him to understand that 90% of what he has come up with is not going to be relevant to the child in its content? As a degree, it's needed. I understand that. In its content. So why is it the degree is needed? Why do we need degree and percentage? Because we get into a job. It's a job requirement. Through the job, we get money certain sense, this is a kind of a football game. You know, in a football game, two teams are playing against each other and the goal is to put the ball into the goal post. Here also two teams are playing. There is a parent team and there is a teacher's team. Only thing, instead of two goals, there is only one goal post. They are, they are trying to put the football, who is the student, the child, into the same goal post. And what is that goal post? Five digit salary. <laughs> You know, we talk about three R's in the education, reading, writing and Mathematics. arithmetic. Yeah. Three R's. The fourth R, which is most powerful, is rupees. That's what, yes please. I just, I'm really confused. I want to yeah. know, like, when these Americans do the survey, the educationists out there, they face our system. Actually, there's this person, I've forgotten his name. He was all on BBC and CNN and he was, he's a really talented teacher. He's really been included in America. And he went to Bangladesh, he came to India and I think in China. Okay. These three countries he surveyed and he went to South also. Mm -hmm. Southern India. To Could South you give a mic over there? Continue. Yes, sir, he praised our system. He said we should be following Indian system. The children are so good. We really need to be. So I get really confused and why do we, why yeah. do we blame him for our system? We are not blaming, blaming our system, we are questioning our system. So it is not the blame game because we have not yet completed our investigation and therefore we are going deeper with it. We might... I asked every child and you know when I ask them about their career options, the way they came with answers and when I ask our American students, either I am horrified. So can you figure out why? Because he's not American, he's not American, he's not American, he's not American. So can you figure out why he said that? See you know you are in the educational field, you are a parent, are you a parent? No, no but a teacher. 
And from what we have covered, just one look at it and then tell me how much truth is there and why did he say that? Can we not figure it out? We are reaching that stage next. So, we are going to ask ourselves, degrees are needed for getting a job into. So, something or somebody, from what we see, 90% is not relevant. Somehow, we were brainwashed into doing it in order to get and that is money. And in order to get that money, we have to work for somebody else? Yes or no? We have to go and then work for the corporate world or wherever you... So in a certain sense, this is the difference I am making and you will get your answers. For 15 years of time, we are giving something to the child which personally will not be relevant to him, but which will help him to work for somebody else to earn profit for them and in that process you will get a few thousand rupees. Have I expressed myself clearly? You are training your children to earn money for somebody else and how important is his own dreams and his own true inner happiness? Am I giving you the context? We will come why we got and how we got brainwashed because we need to ask ourselves so clear and yet so needed. We can't say no to this education obviously and how did it happen? Who gave this idea that these are the subjects you should teach and these are the subjects you are not supposed to teach because we have already selected it for you. I am going to ask a few questions at random. Is anybody here who get angry sometimes? Is there all most of the okay? <laughs> so is there anybody who doesn't get angry at all? Here? That's a safe question. Is it important for you to know how to control your anger? Yes or no? Why can't we have a subject like how to control my anger? I would say irritation and how to not to get frustrated with things, they are all part. How not to get strained, stressed. Do your children get stressed or strained when the exam time comes? Especially the 10th exam and the public exam come. Do you think it's a good topic? How not to get angry? And then how to be very... Do you think it is important for us to know how to love somebody? How important is love in our life? And we already know how to love, right? Yes. Did I hear yes? Yes, I thought we just learn to love. We just love. We just love. Yeah. And as it comes, and then some people happy with it, some people demand more, some people get jealous, some people come up with demand. I'm just going to give you a situation which was there in the 90s. So I'm not telling that it is happening in any one of your house, okay? So, um... There is a situation, it's one of the TV dramas, okay? Sas Bahu classic situation. So somebody gets married and goes into a house. See, so don't uh, try to relate it to your experience, okay? It's just an example which I am giving you. So the Bahu gets into the house and uh, it's a house where there is a mother, husband, husband's mother, few other people are there. And she gets into a nice mood and one week uh, passes by. The, the Bahu has not really gone outside, stepped outside. So one day she asked the husband, so... Abhi, no, why don't you take me out because one week I have been there in the house taking care of cooking and then this and this and this. She's a non-working lady, okay? Remember, 90s. So the husband says that, okay, fine, let's go for a movie and then outside dinner tomorrow. And then the tomorrow he takes her for dinner and a movie also. So they come back, thoda late ho gaya, das baje ho gaya. And when they come, who is it standing? The mother is standing. Poor thing, she has already prepared nice food, khana. So, Bahu is not there, I have to prepare food. And my son has never um, skipped dinner. He has always been having with me. So, he will come back now. I have to have daddy. So, nice pakka dinner. So, he comes and says that, no, we went for a movie. And we had dinner also outside. What does the mother say? She doesn't say anything. But during the next two days, through all small, small things, these are the clearly communicated feeling that until this time, you are having dinner with me. So, kal koi aaye hai. Yesterday somebody came and then you have taken her for an outing and then you feel like skipping the dinner. She doesn't say. This a, imagine this is a drama, okay? So, in two days, the husband notices small, small things, small, small things and he begins to feel because communication is clear, though words, nothing is communicated. 
So then on the third day, he feels for his mother and then he goes to his mother and says, then mommy, so tomorrow, na, I want to take you out. You must have some shopping. So we'll do some shoppings and we will have some nice kana and then we will come back. So he takes the mommy out, shopping over, kana over. They come a little late and who is standing there in the house? So daughter is daughter. <laughs> what is the, the thought running in her? If you have to take your mummy out for shopping and Anna, why did you marry me? And Bechara husband, see I don't know whether Bechara husband still exists, I'm just giving you an example. Poor thing, he wanted to love equally. But every time we try to love more than one person in an, in an unlimited way, have you come across any problem? Best friends. Usually how many best friends do we have when you are in college? 10, 15 like that? No. Best friend means? No. One. one. Why can't we have two best friends? Have you, anybody here has two best friends? No, many. many. Many best friends. <laughs> okay. Because you confide different things to different friends. It depends on which <laughs> And if you bring them all together and let each other know what is happening, immediately you spend some time with one friend and then you take him for some nice dinner outside and the next day the other one will come, oh you spent so much time with them, that is a costly restaurant, you people had masti, you should have called me, I should have been in your thought first. And then you take him for a weekend somewhere out and the first one says, so you have now forgotten me, now you are with him more. We just relate to the situations that how we are not able to love or accept love in an unconditional, unlimited way. How much problem we have? Yes or no? Isn't it important for us to know how to love another person, how to maintain relationship, whatever it is, motherly, fatherly, brotherly, sisterly? Why can't we have a subject how to love? The same. Exactly. Because these things are easier to teach, because these things you can conduct exam and therefore do we conclude that they are the only things worth teaching? In, we are coming to it, 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 coming to it, coming to it. We think it cannot be taught because they are not supposed to be taught. Has anybody given you an example of love? And then you picked up a few tips on how to love. Yes or no? Has it ever happened to you? No, 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 no. If you have you picked up from somebody who is so full of love, and then you had the feeling that oh, this is such a beautiful. All the Shah Rukh Khan movies. Yes sir, no. I don't know whether how this group is. There are idealizing love, and then you get overflowed. We make a difference. These cannot be taught, but this can be learned. Yes or no? Yes. Can you all think of uh, your most favorite teacher in your school days? Yes. Why was he the most favorite? Can you just list down? Why was he the most favorite? Just list down. This in him made me like him. This in me made him. And I learnt so much from him. Just write down. Just write down. Just write down. Somebody who is most loving, most caring. Because then we have to get the answer to the question that has come up now. Sir, I want to ask. Ah, yes, please. Anger or how to love. class for these subjects? No, we have not yet arrived at that but stage. For mathematics, we need for chemistry. We have not yet reached that stage because our inquiry into the values is not yet complete. I am going to give you, and I am going to show you a video, and after that, if you have not changed your opinion, you just tell me, because it is not that they are to be taught. But there is a way in which children pick up the values and we can facilitate it. We are going to arrive at a difference between facilitating and teaching. Mathematics you can teach, but love and care and concern you cannot teach, but you can facilitate. We will arrive at that because it's the most important thing. If we can facilitate it, I would. That's why I said the person who is most beloved for you among the teaching community 
Why does he become the most favorite? The answer lies there. Because from him, you have learned so much. He has not taught them in a formal classroom. Because I know the teachers. Because every time I remember them, tears come to my eyes. I still uh, remember, I, I was Tamil medium. I remember the Tamil medium teacher when he comes and stands. You can see the, the love he has for Tamil, that language. And when he recites poem, he doesn't recite, he just sings it out. And he has given me the love for Tamil, my language. It's an undeniable. And I owe my debt to him. And I owe my debt to my mathematics teacher for giving me a passion for mathematics. And there are a few other teachers who took me so much care that I have learned from them how to show care and concern. And from my people who are with me, I have learned how to express love. So it is not true that we can't learn these things from the others, but it cannot be taught. Did the teacher tell me that this is how you should learn love and this is the things that you should love? He, I will go, we'll go step by step. What did he do is, very simple, he embodied his love for the language. And if he remained elsewhere, will that have happened to me? In and through what he did in the classroom, he has actually enabled me to acquire the love for the language. He facilitated the process of awakening something which was already in me. Love is already in us. Nobody has to teach us and we acquire. Even little children, when they come and then they give you a hug, do you think they have taken classes on how to love? They are so tiny and yet their love is so infinite, vast, you can't measure it. It's there. And did we facilitate its growth in the process of the next 15 years of education? And how do we do it? We will arrive at it. But we have to accept the possibility of how embodying the quality and then making ourselves available. If I am the most courageous person in the world, let us say I am just giving you an example, then every word I speak will come out of that courage. Every action that I do will be an expression of what I embody, which is the courage. And every activity that I do will be an expression of that. And when children come into that vibration of courage, that is how they pick up. Why? Children are like sponge. Put it in the water and it will soak. And the child comes into this atmosphere. He is learning much more by absorbing things directly. I will give you several examples of how it happened. It happened even in the parliament also. I have noticed that the days in which I am a little angry or a little sad, and when I enter into a classroom, I may be putting up a smile, but I can immediately see that the children begin to respond to my sadness much more. And if I am very restless, even though I have a nice, beautiful activity, I have seen that activity falling apart because that restless vibration is the first thing that the children caught, catches. They catch what I speak comes next to it. Children, the capacity to imbibe through influence is vastly underestimated, underexplored, because of which we think that these are the things that could be taught and let us bring in. I know the difficulty and perhaps that is why, because they are not taught in the same way, is it reason enough to take it out? If I have to go back to the ancient Indian Gurukula, one of their objective is bring out the natural hidden talents and qualities. Help it. Where the teacher himself is an example of what he tells. And he walks, he talks, he sleeps, he eats. And then he invokes and inspires the quality in everybody. And that is how the things which belong to the inside of child is brought out. You see the beautiful thing? We are not only talking about, we are not going to do everything in the same way because somebody has given us some method and then we got caught up in it. So we say, if it cannot be done like this, let us take it out. Now you can express. There was a thought process which I needed to complete.
tendency to joy. Have you observed it? Yes, sir. When you are happy, even if you don't start jumping around, you know, children catch it very quickly. And courage is the, to give courage to someone. And even if she is the only example, I will take it because she has given me a possibility. And because the possibility that she, she gives me is too important for me, I will take it and I will practice it myself. Because finally, I have to understand this truth. Not somebody from BBC is going to put his ideas into me. And I am going to ask my questions and arrive at my own conclusion. And that is what we are trying to do here. So we'll come back to this. There are a lot of things. Let us not think that this is how we have to teach. Perhaps the teaching methodology has to undergo a change if the subjects are vastly different. That is what we are arriving at. And if that has to be done, okay, we'll do a small activity now. Where if complete freedom, freedom is given to you. Listen to me carefully how I am phrasing the question. What are the things that you would like to see in children developed? <coughs> see, somebody is going to come and say, you don't have to teach syllabus. Because we see 95% of what we do, except for getting a job, making him work for somebody else, it's not. Suppose if we add something more and yet cover the basics, I tell you any good corporate you go, if you are good with the fundamentals, you can get through. Now having recognized that, let us come back and ask ourselves the question, what are the things that we need to, that we would like to see developed in children? And for this, if we can come up with, a, see how we have come up with topics, these are not the topics that you have been asked to choose. These are the topics decided by the corporates because later they will take up something related to it and therefore they have put it inside by taking something out and we need to figure out and bring it back when it is necessary. But we are not going to leave the fundamentals. Okay? So when you write, what is it that I would like to see developed in the child? The basics are taken for granted. I need basics of physics and chemistry and biology and mathematics. No question about that. Beyond the common minimum. If you are given the full freedom, what other things would you like to bring? I would like you to perhaps break up into uh, smaller groups and come up with 10 topics. Like how we arrived at this 10 subject. You don't have to include mathematics, physics because their basics are already taken for granted. Given the freedom, what other subject would you like? Which will make a child as complete as possible. A complete human being. I'm not asking you what you can teach. Because we don't yet know. What are the things that you would like to see developed in the child? Love or care or compassion or whatever it is there. Note down. At least a 10. And uh, really solid. Something that makes a man simply dynamic and complete. These are the things. If we have no idea about these, then probably we may not be able to make it happen. That's what we are arriving at. So, you two people, come up with 10 topics. And, uh, okay, so if necessary you can even turn around because here this is one group, already formed a group, so only three are left, two are left, so can you join? Okay, so three groups, ten topics, solid, gems, I want ten gems, you are already consulting? Okay, fine, you are left out. You are left out and you are already one group. Okay. So you two can join them. Hmm? Come up with 10 topics. I don't want the whole syllabus, okay? Just the topic and you should be able to say in a couple of lines what is it and we are not going for the lesson plan now.
apart from sharing and caring, closer, I have closer. acceptance, tolerance. Acceptance of what? Acceptance of the entire being around you, everybody. You need to accept. Good to have acceptance. There are good, bad, ugly, all types are there. Are we supposed to be accepting? Nowadays, the inclusiveness is a big thing. So, it's good or bad, you go and then Galila. It's too dangerous. What type of acceptance to be? Accepting are we supposed to accept everything that comes our way? Accepting our own faults, accepting our own goods also at times is supposed to be taught. Or in fact, they need to be uh, provoked towards it. Just a little more clarity because sometimes we just need a little more clarity is all that we are going to attempt here. Accepting our faults. What does it mean? Admitting to... I have a tendency to hurt others. So I have to accept myself. If I have made a mistake, I need to accept that. Is it a complete step or is it only a half step? Half step. Agreed. The other half is? Rectifying it. So in acceptance, she says everything has to be accepted but the good thing you accept in order to retain it, the bad things you accept in order to rectify. But do we have to accept all the bad things out of, out there, or do we have? We have a choice. Just throwing a few points and then we will move on. Next one. Uh, being a conscious citizen. Huh. Is your list making over? If so, we will stop the discussions and listen to, because sometimes a nice point comes. One are here and it gives a tremendous clarity. So after acceptance. Being a conscious citizen, conscious about the nature, the environment, the people around us, be having a conscious in our own entire soul. Okay, like what being aware right. of what is what Absolutely. and then its role in our life. Right, sir. So that we can arrive at our own um, probably priorities. This right. is most important, this is this, 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 and then it makes our life easier. Okay, yes. becoming aware, becoming conscious. Yes. And to accept that we are all different. Every child wants to become a topper, but then we have to actually tell them that Every one of you is different, so his capabilities in this subject might be much more, okay. yours is not. So, we so understanding each one's individuality Absolutely. and that it is unique. Yes, sir. Excellent topic. You know, sometimes what I'm going to give you a hint is, what we are thinking in terms of classroom, some of it is already happening in your families. Probably one of the reasons is you have only two children or one at home and a lot of things are happening. They are picking up constantly things from you. You set an example and they would have picked it up. So, so accept. that's it. We are supposed to have 10. Only 7? We have more. So, when you read, if she has already covered something, you can skip. If it's new, you can, you can let me know the topics. You would like to go? Please. Uh, so, we would like to focus for, uh, first of all, on digni dignity for self. A person oh. should have a lot of self-respect and then only yes. uh, he'll be able to appreciate things. Then, so, when you say um, self-respect, there are a lot of things which come from a moral background. And I am somewhere in the modern youngsters, they are, they are rebelling against morality. When you say self-acceptance, I am going to ask you whether it's a half step or full step. I find so many good things as well as bad things. And probably my tendency to lie, tendency to get irritated, angry, lose this, I am weak physically. When I say I accept myself, what does it mean? Are we accepting our weaknesses along with something else? The good there thing? are certain weaknesses which can be overcome. Most of them can be overcome. Some cannot be overcome. And, and there are many qualities with which the child is inborn in it. There are, there are both heredity positive problems and negative also. tendencies in us. There are some children who delight in hurting things. I was one of them. You know what I used to do? You, you know the dragonfly? When we were ch child, see how insensitive I was. So I used to capture the dragonfly and tie a thread to its tail and then a small and then we used to provoke it, fly, fly, fly. And it is a great source of joy when I was a child and I was not aware of the hurt I was causing. So if I have to accept myself, what does it mean? That's why I told her, it's the first step, be very careful. Because we use certain words just like the top left because lot of words are coming from the West. Inclusiveness, acceptance and this and integration and integrality and then so many. We just have to always go one step deeper to have an understanding 
and then we will use these words with that understanding and let us be bold enough to reject these words if they don't go well with our way of life. Let's not blindly include, somebody comes and says that inclusiveness, I'm not going to blindly include everything. Acceptance, this is it. Self-respect you will equate to acceptance? Half step only. Okay. What we, we respect things that are good, beautiful, noble in us and things that are opposing it, I am going to work on them. And they both together, it's like two sides of a coin. Yeah, then we, we would uh, go in for being sensitive. See, we are already moving towards getting a syllabus. I'm just giving you hints. Oh. That's it. Now, uh, then we should have uh, dignity of labor. We should uh, look yes. upon all professions. We should yes. be taught that like they shouldn't uh, like ancient Indian system had that. You could Absolutely. choose your own um, profession, whatever you liked. It had nothing to do with what kind of education you had. After dignity of labor, dedication to the nation. So are you listening? Dedication to, dedication the, to the nation. Absolutely. Then appreciation of the nature. Differentiating between right and wrong and the surroundings. Whoa. Oh, it is subjective, but it has to be somewhere, no? Oh, is it subjective <laughs> or objective? Now you have given me the clue. <laughs> right and wrong, is it only subjective or is it only objective? No, it is. Uh, it can be both. It, they, you cannot define it. It is not a well-defined set. Give me one example. Now that you are very clear about it. Okay. When uh, is it subjective? Like see when you were uh, killing those dragons, mm. at that time you were not uh, knowing according to you. Yeah. So y it was just going on. Later you realize it is wrong. So you know it was not defined right and wrong. But you understood later on that it was wrong. There are many things which we don't understand at times, but then we should, we need to have a line of demarcation that, well, this is wrong, this is right, and we need to follow the right path. Though it's difficult most of the times, but Very good. it is. It's difficult, it is subjective and objective. This it, is it, what we knew. There are certain things as a society, we have to decide what is okay with the society. And within that, subjectively, there are various levels. At each level, we have to decide what is okay with us and what is not okay with us and how do we decide what is okay with us that's a big question not that is now. a very complicated question that uh, how to decide next stop. then um, appreciation of the nature I had already uh, yeah. said very very what nature can teach us we talk about generosity just to look at nature does it uh, keep anything to itself in a mango tree when the mango is ripe until it is ripe it's not it won't give you when it is right, it has to give it away and every part of it. Such an example of generosity. The tree gives shade and this and that. It doesn't want to keep anything for ourselves. So does the tree, does the tree eat any food? Yes or no? Yes, it does. It does. That is it. So it takes water, it takes oxygen and then makes it into nice juicy uh, arm and then give it. Like that, something similar to what our mom does. What her mother does, she goes to the mall, gets so many things and then converts it into something nice and gives it to us. Nice. So sensitivity. What does sensitivity mean? Um, I mean slightly sensitive towards what is happening in your surrounding. In the sense awareness, more we should be uh -huh. more aware of Let it be awareness. Happening. Or by word. sensitivity, do you mean a certain shrinking? No, 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 no. Oh, definitely not. not. Karo, I'm very sensitive to sounds. Awareness. Awareness. Yes. Which is already covered. Fine. So rest are covered, I think so. Rest and I would covered. focus Fine. more on these five values. Well, we'll come there. Um, <laughs> what we will do now is I'm going to show you a video of a class that happened in Japan. I've just got a taste of it. I just wanted to kickstart your process. Whatever you have come up with, let me assure you, you can do it very well in your family. And about here, we will see how it can be because step by step we have to build ourselves into without understanding this. And without making it easy for us, we won't have time for anything else. So how to do that? We will come up with certain things which will make us to maintain the syllabus in a very, very short way. Uh, does anybody here has a topic called concentration? Just put up your hand in your list of 10. I would like concentration to be developed. Swami Vivekananda was asked once, 
But when you have to go back and redo your education, what is the one thing you would like to learn? And he said, I will master my capacity of concentration because if I have mastered, I can learn anything at will because I will have such a stupendous power of focus and concentration. It's like a lens which is focusing sunlight. Anything that wants to reveal will reveal itself if I have the power of concentration. So if you bring in one subject, and if you bring it as part of curriculum, by making some concession, and the children, when they grow up with concentration, class one, class two, by the time they reach class three, now, their concentration would be so much improved that what you needed to teach in 2,000 hours, they will learn it in 1,500 hours, and you will have excess time in which we can explore something new. We must defeat the system in and through the system simply because we feel that this is very much needed. There are certain things if we bring it in, first thing we have to do is we are not going to, I'm not going to say that no stop teaching all this beyond the minimum, no. We have to be intelligent because we have been defeated by intelligence by accepting this, we somehow got brainwashed. But we are going to brainwash ourselves back and we will be intelligent in our approach. So by bringing in certain things, but coming back to this classroom, this is a class which is like a free period that you have mentioned about. What is it called? Zero, zero. zero period. Why do you call it a zero? Okay, nothing to do with marks, no? Zero marks are given, so you do whatever you want. Zero comes before one, so this comes before everything, and that is why you are giving only one period in the whole week. Every day. Excellent. This is how it should be. Now, coming back to this particular classroom, so there is one Professor Kanimara, that is a Japanese name, and he spent time with nine, ten year old children. And uh, he was hit in the classroom because his classroom was the most chaotic. When you pass by his classroom, you will always find his classroom, the children making the maximum noise and not a single child sitting dung say like that and I am going to learn something. Everybody will be sitting in the way in which they want. And for an outsider, utter chaos. But for an insider who has seen what happens there, it was a revelation. So when TV camera uh, crew went there, they tracked what happens over a period of one And then they made it into a documentary called Children Full of Life. And then some of the questions might get answered. You'll get an idea of some of the things that we want to, can it be done? I find that zero hour is something. That, in zero hour, is a particular teacher assigned or all the teachers take turn? We can interchange. This is an excellent opportunity for you to try out something. And that's what we are going to see. This is the Minami Kodatsuno Kanazawa Municipal Elementary School, Grade 4, Class 1. It's April 2002, a new school year. Grade 3 is past, faded, but not forgotten. Here's someone from back then. They're overjoyed to see their homeroom teacher is Toshiro Kanamori, same as last year, the best, kind and tough and funny. いや。1年間一番大事にしてやって言ったのは何やった。ハッピー。覚えするのは何しに来とるって言ってた。ハッピー。ハッピーになるためだってこと。ハッピーになるためだってこと。はい、オッケーならオッケーちゃんと言って
how to care for other people. Mr. Kanamori's class has a tradition. Every day in homeroom, three students read aloud letters they've written. They're called notebook letters. They're written to the other students, and they're a true, surprising record of what these ten-year-olds really think. Happiness, irritation, determination, gratitude, whatever is real, because the other children will pick up whatever isn't. Late April, Ren Sueda comes to class for the first time in four days. His grandmother died. In his notebook, Ren writes about the death, the funeral, his loss. They were worried. They didn't know why Ren was away. Now they're moved at his pain and saddened by his loss. ごく別式だった。最後のお別れに花をいっぱい入れてあげた。僕は涙がボロボロと出た。みんなも泣いていた。バスで仮装場へ行った。1時間ぐらいでおばあちゃんは骨になっていた。おばあちゃんがいなく
、ね、南美冬だから一度は美冬がお父さんのことをみんなの前で言った方が気が楽になるだろうなと思ってたけどもその心をねレンちゃんの頼りも開いてくれたわけだ手紙のことな。They're trying to understand. They all find it painful, some find it unbearable. Yo Enomoto is the class spark plug, high energy, charming. Now he's remembering the death of his grandmother. So, I'm going to start. Ah? So, I'm going to start. 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 人を住まわせる、うん、心に定員はないから、うん、そうやってみんなに語ってみんなに共感してもらって本当にこう聞く相手がいると、うん、そうやって自分の心の中に人が住み着く、うん、それが手紙ノートのものすごい大きな意味かなと。Now, Mifuyu's gotten up the nerve to bring a picture to class, her most precious picture. Her father was a designer. This was his last work, a model for a parade exhibit. He died before it was built. She didn't want to seem different. Now she's more a part of the class than ever. And now she can talk about her father and smile. <laughs> Mr. Kanamori is 57 years old. He believes the world values life less every day. He believes a teacher's job is to show how precious life is. Other teachers visit his class to watch and learn. <laughs> Japanese language class. The character means to wrap or enfold. Kanemori says it evolved from the image of a woman carrying an unborn child. Good teachers connect theory with life. June, halfway through the first semester, and a problem, a nasty one. A few children are being teased, bullied.
The bullies laugh at their test scores and make up stories about them. It's vicious, destructive, and Kanamori says it has to be talked out and stopped cold right now. Bullying is contempt and hatred, completely indefensible. Fine as far as it goes, but nobody's admitted to anything. Kanamori wants the bullies to confess and explain their behavior. Nobody admits anything. Kanamori's had enough. きれいごとでごまかすつもりか君たちは。自分のことをやっぱり棚上げして言ってるじゃないか。今の言い方だったらずっとさっきからずぼーっと抜けてるのはこれだよ。人のことばっかりやがいや。自分やってたよって誰も言ってないじゃないですか。かっこよすぎるんだよ。勉強できないから。笑って嫌でしょ、自分が。ちゃいますか。風呂入らない。言ってたでしょ。聞いてたでしょ。広めたでしょ。ち
<笑>保育園の頃に保育園の頃みたいにみんなにいじめられるのが怖くて。She knew how much it hurt to be picked on, laughed at. It hurt so much, she was afraid to shelter someone else. She is remorseful. The lesson? We're all vulnerable. We must admit it and go on. Go for it! Mud games a la Kanamori. 35 10 year olds blowing off all that steam. It may not be tidy, but it's good for grade 4 class 1's soap. October and one of the biggest events of the school year. They've spent a month working in three teams building rafts. Today, they go rafting. The rafts are their work. They designed them, scrounged the materials, built them by themselves. And today they're all at school a half hour early for the final pre-launch checks. It's a long wait till fifth period. And there's trouble when they get there. Mr. Kanamori is furious. Yuto Araki has been chattering and goofing around all morning. Mr. Kanamori's warned him it didn't work. Everybody rafts, but Yuto. He stays on shore. But class one doesn't accept that. Yo Enomoto was in the same raft making team as Yuto, and he's first on his feet to take on the teacher. This is a very dangerous challenge to a powerful authority. Yo is frightened, but he keeps going. 
りいくらそんなことして笑っつってやっぱりやりすぎやからあのプールのこととかいかだのこととか関係あるといえばあるけどないといえばないんやから許してくださいお願いしますお願いしますお願いしますお願いしますマルカ、チョークス、アンドクラスメイト、モーズ、インドヘル。アラキソは、まあ、確かに、悪いけど、マリナは、僕たちの、にも責任はあるので、残る、アラキソだけ残るのは、もう、差別みたいなもんなので、荒木くんが残るなら僕も残ります。みんながもうさっき許してくれるって言って一人もあるっていうねお前ここで残ってるやつも一人もいないんだからあるきにこれをやらせてくださいお願いしますお願いしますよ久しぶりにかっこいいいいこと言ったな今から潰した時間を取り戻せ、はい、Launch is 40 minutes late, but the rafters are happy. The next day, Yuto describes his feelings in a notebook letter. I caused a lot of trouble yesterday. I'm sorry. I want to thank Mayuka. She stood up for me to the point of crying on my behalf. And Yo and Kosuki, they were choked up too, but they still kept speaking out. Thank you. I want to thank everyone who cheered me up on the way to the pool. It should have been me crying all those tears. I want to thank you. ま、よくやった方ですね。あれはもう完璧でした。私の完璧な負けです。はい。<笑>友達やから、あらきは。彼とも一緒にやっとるし、普通の
と友達頭を蹴るけど友達ねだから友達やから友達守っておるのこのも先生言ってたよえ、え、学校へ来てるのはハッピーになるためだ全員みんながハッピーになるためだって、うんうん、だから一人だけハッピーじゃなくなるからそしたらみんなもハッピーじゃなくなるからうん、うん、じゃあうんありがとうありがとうねレイド4 Class one is a little closer to a family. It's January, the final semester, and Kanamori's blend of academics and life learning continues. He assigns each student to draw a self portrait inside and outside, body, mind, and soul. You get an outline of your body traced onto paper. Then you fill it in with who you are, where you came from, where you're going. Tsubasa Ichitani's portrait doesn't look like Tsubasa much. His classmates help him with a new body. But there's a reason Tsubasa was shaky. きょう一番大事な話を伝えます。2年間の中で最も大事な話だ。しっかりと。翼が今日欠席しました。と正確正確にはまだ言えないんだけど、翼のお父さんが今朝突然亡くなられたそうです。布団の中で朝気づいたらもう亡くなっていたはいそうね三冬は私と同じだって今言ったね三冬は三歳で突然にお父さんを奪われたこんなことは次々と経験してほしくないし起きてほしくないけども悲しいかな命には約束がない絶対だという約束はないだからこそ生きることや命をしっかり考えておいてほしいし翼を励ましてほしい励ましてほしい Tall order. His father's dead. They're ten. Here's a start. After school, Yo and Omoto and three friends call on Subasa with some snacks. <笑>俺がやったら1ヶ月ぐらいのおかしいやな。いっちゃんどうやった私見た。いっちゃん、まあ、一応元気はあるかったけどな。いいよ。もう一応ありがとうって。ありがとうって。うん。<笑><笑>
Now, to business. Everyone in grade four, class one, writes Tubasa a comforting letter. And three days later, はい。じゃあ、こんにちは。Individual letters from children's hearts. And the calligraphy, painstaking, neat, beautiful. Here's Yo Enomoto's letter. You've lost your dad and the happy way he used to call out your name. I cry when I think about it. We can't make it better, but if there's anything we can do to help you, tell us. This letter from Mifuyu, the girl whose father died when she was three. Dear Tsubasa, I expect your dad dying still hurts really badly. But someday you'll be able to tell us about it. You've got to live on for your dad's sake now. Don't rush things. Just hang in there. It's March. Only 10 days of school left for grade four, class one. They'll be broken up, shuffled to other classes next year. So the last family project has to be a classic. Not surprising somehow that the fearless Yo and his pal Kenta have a brainstorm. Class meeting. They make their pitch. あの、僕は、あの、March 20th, Letter Day. Grade 4, Class 1 can't get outdoors fast enough. <laughs> They're ending two years together with an act of mature, creative compassion. They're writing a giant notebook letter to the dead fathers of Tsubasa and Mufuyu. <laughs> They scratch out their message in the hard earth. Each student writes one character. Yeah. 
It's ready. And it's big enough, clear enough, careful enough that you could read it looking down from heaven. Last day of school, March 24th. After two years, the students are going separate ways. One final time, Kanamori writes his favorite word, bonding. そして They're not always satisfied. They're not always well behaved. They are 35 children. But perhaps they know something now most other children don't about trust, respect, and friendship. And although they're not always happy, perhaps they have a special inside track on happiness after two years with Mr. Kanamori. How was it? The way he did it, there are a few pointers which we have to pick up. And once we are able to pick up those pointers, they are like gems as how another way of education could happen because it doesn't fit into. Can you teach, uh, as you teach mathematics, whatever he has taught? He brought the real life situation into the classroom. Suppose if mathematics teacher will have to make mathematics as part of the real life every time she teaches a theorem, it will be too difficult because mathematics is supposed to be taught in that way. And here is the life situations which has to be taught in real life situations and that is how Professor Kanimura was uh, doing this with children. The second one, whenever they had a problem, did he give the solution? If he had given the solution, it will be called teaching, it will be called moral education lesson. What you did is wrong, what you did is, he made them feel from within and then he made them, he created circumstances so that they can express what they have felt. And what he did, was it teaching? Facilitating. You understand now the meaning of the word facilitating? Facilitation is nothing but bringing out things from children. And when you are bringing out things, 
you are there to facilitate that the best part of the child comes out. Because you give an opportunity, everything is going to come out. As in the first round, usually they are not yet there. For example, you remember the bullying case? They were all talking about he should not have said that and that person should not have, what he did was wrong. But he didn't uh, stop with that. He persisted and he persisted and he was constantly facilitating until the best in them came out where one girl came up and she grew up in a place you know, where there is no parents and somebody told her that you are not clean but she did not even have the facility to take bath. And then that hurt her and then she could relate to it and then she responded, reacted and things happened like that. We, if we are not made to realize from within, if you are given everything as a teaching, then this is not going to work. But when we do facilitation, first thing, if Professor Kannimara himself has no clue, no idea of what is right and wrong, would he be able to guide and facilitate? And this is the beauty of it. The first thing we have to do in order to be able to educate a child is we educate ourselves. How do we do it? We are adults. We can go and figure it out. But there are some beautiful techniques available. What is the type of education? This is an education which is different. In order to teach mathematics, you don't have to do this. But in order to teach or facilitate what has happened, you need two things. It's a two-step process. If we have to educate ourselves, one, to become conscious. Second, if we become conscious of it, what happens when you become conscious that, oh, maine kuch bola hai, wo galat tha. when you become conscious of it, next time when you are about to say the same thing, something inside will tell you, hey, careful, same thing happened. And then you check, you control yourself. And when you control yourself, gradually, you will not come to repeat the same mistake. You would have mastered yourself in that particular and this is the process to be followed. The process to be followed for mathematics is uh, textbook and then uh, what they call as chalk and talk and then board. But here one has to become conscious of it and if as one has gained control over it, then one can facilitate the thing to happen so that one never sets a bad example to one's child. You can't facilitate if you yourself are not the living example of it. And therein lies the clue. If we can embody what we want to be developed in children, it is like a fire that catches. They are not taught, they are caught. You stand in front of them as a living example of love. You don't have to do a, a chalk and talk method in order to teach them love. They will catch it. They will catch it from where? Not from you, because you are only facilitating. They are going to catch it from within themselves, because that is where whatever we want to be developed, it is there. How to know what is right and wrong? The capacity, where does it lie? Not in any of the textbooks, not in scriptures, not in whatever book you can. It lies here, within us. The capacity to love. Even a two-year-old child can love unconditionally. We have difficulty. We have picked up some wrong ideas, expectations. But how is he able to love without undergoing any training? Because it comes from there. The amount of trust a child. We have trust issues, right? Child, when he comes, he is giving you 100%. You take him upstairs to the third floor and then ask him, tell him that you are Superman, you can fly. And then he will fly. He will try to fly at least. That is the amount of trust that he can have. It's coming from inside. And we have not really explored what is there as a potential in the child. And because we are not aware of the technique, we think that it cannot be taught like mathematics and physics and chemistry. Yes, true. But it can be facilitated. And we need to have absolute conviction before we can get into it. So if we are only facilitating, and if the things are coming from the child, what is there in the child also? What is there deep within us? Have you ever explored it? Become conscious of it? See, all of us, we all have a body. We don't have one body, we have three bodies. Do you believe me? Another body is sitting at home. 
Yes or no? We have a physical body. Do we have another body? A body of emotions? What you call as vital? What happens there? All the emotions, happy, sad, jealous, hatred, love, courage, honesty, being truthful, sincerity, all the emotions and qualities are there. It's made up of that body. And do we have one more body? What happens there? All the thoughts, you doubt somebody and then you come up with you know, logical explanation, you figure out things, you make a plan, you stick to the plan, all that comes, where does it happen? We are aware of these three bodies, isn't it? But when you are children, all of you, I am talking about all of you, as soon as you are born, were you given a lecture by your mom that when you are supposed to open your eyes, when you are supposed to start listening, did you give a lecture to the child on the first day, you know, you have to open your eyes, on the second day, you have to start listening, and then you take the hand of the child and say, touch, touch your mama, this is who your mama is. Enjoy the sixth period. Enjoy the sixth period. Yeah. And the child knows you are the mama, yes? Even without opening, just by that warmth, the touch, the child has been inside the womb for, and then when it comes out, it knows, it can touch. Anybody else touch, it will start crying. And after that, there is a big event, you know, the first time it, over how many are here who are mothers of children? Majority. Major event, when it flips over, until that, it is simply pushing hands and legs in the air. And at one point when it flips over, you say, oh, look at that. How many muscles need to be activated in order to do that? No, it is almost like a high level gymnastics for us, what the child has done. How did the child do it? Who gave it? Who taught it? Inbuilt knowledge. And when the child begins to get up, it will try 100 times, it will fail, it will fall down. And 101st time? Was it failing all the hundred times? It was building up every muscle that is needed so that the child can stand up. And then after that, running, climbing, in the same way, it's there in the knowledge. How to develop the body? How to digest the body? Do we have to go to classes? Send the child for classes? It knows. In the same way, just as it knows, in the emotional body also, it knows what is the right emotion and wrong emotion and in the thought body also, it knows that what are the best thoughts that one can have simply because behind these three body, there is something which you can only call it as something which knows what is the right thing and what is the best thing for the child and for everybody. And mother gives it a name. Okay, mother gives it two names. One is psychic being, the other one, and we have to understand that it is already there in the child. And if it's already there in the child, it's just a question of facilitating. We don't have to think too much of, you know, creating a syllabus and making discoveries and coming and then teaching the child. What she calls it, the second name. <coughs> Can any one of you read it loudly with uh, Tada? Uh, any one of you who have who have a loud voice, probably get up and then they will get. The, there is a genius within every one of us. We don't know it. We must find the way to make it come out. But it is there sleeping. It asks for nothing better than to manifest. We must open the door to it. See? In fact, I would say teaching mathematics is too difficult because you have to understand, figure out and then come back and then helping the child to understand is too difficult. But here is something which is already there waiting to come out and you just have to facilitate it, create the necessary condition, the life situation and if we facilitate it, it comes down simply because it is ready. How do we do it in the classroom? And why, how do we, I've already given you a few techniques of how to do it. If only we know how to do it efficiently. And all of you will have to really think about the things that you need to know so that you get a little extra time. And in that extra time, we can bring in a lot. The more we do it, you're going, all this is going to get easier. 
Because a child when he starts developing his mind and know how to analyze and learn, for him mathematics is a cakewalk. Understanding physics will come naturally to him and all the sciences, environmental science and everything else. And then we enter into how important is it? If it is really important, then we will have to strike a balance between the academics and what is related directly to life. And some of the beautiful things he said, why do children will have to come to the school? To be happy. To be happy. And the moment this is communicated to the child, the moment he is not happy, he will automatically know that no, something is not okay with me. I need to figure it out. He becomes conscious. When he becomes conscious, he works on it and then he masters it. How simple is the process? And then something he said when bullying uh, people, And the raft episode, so something wonderfully said, solution must match the problem. How many times we bribe, if you study today very well, tomorrow you get a chocolate. Do you do it at home with your children? Or I will take you to a movie, this one. It's not matching. What is the connection between going to a movie and him studying it, even poor thing, even if he doesn't understand? Should he not help him to generate an interest in the topic, we sit him and make it meaningful and relevant to him and then he, he learns it for the joy of learning. Instead, why do we have to give chocolate? And then the chocolate, withhold the chocolate because he has not done something. Is it matching the solution and the problem? No way. The solution should match the problem. How precious life. Death, nothing is taboo all go through very traumatic experience, somebody close to them dies. And did you see how beautifully he put it, those who die, they live in our hearts. What an assurance to a child, that if you lump somebody, and that somebody dies, don't worry, they live in your heart. Remember them, cherish them, and that's a simple message. What you have done is, not to bash up academics and not to tell that only this has to be there but we have gone through a process of becoming aware now what I have proposed to you is as of yet a dream and perhaps you can practice it in your home where you have maximum control no pressure on you now different type of pressure is there because Sas Bahu and other situations are there but compared to here, you have, there are at least nobody is giving you a syllabus there. And therefore, see if you can practice this with yourself and your family because we don't have anywhere else where we can practice it. Can we not practice it with our friends? Don't, didn't you see how he stood up for his friend? Let us make use of all the life situations and enter into, see integral education will not happen unless and until you cultivate an integral life. And what we saw was an integral life where we connect with ourselves in the life outside. And when integral life happens, you have a possibility of making integral education happen in the classroom. Not otherwise. It's not something to be taught to children. First, we have to assimilate it. And the, mom, the more we do it, the easier it gets down the line. Any questions? Anything? This is a dream. As I told you, you're not going to ask, tomorrow how do I put it into practice? No, the dream has to become your thoughts, your emotions. You live with it. You practice it in, a, in your immediate surroundings where life is available. And as much as possible, bring those life situations into at least that zero hour. It's a wonderful period you have. And gradually, even in and through mathematics, physics and chemistry, they are all not devoid of life. When you look at a tree, is physics involved in it? chemistry involved in environmental science, we have kind of separated so that we have taken only those which are necessary for the corporate life, but we will take life in its completeness and we will also get connected with the tree, we will love the tree and have a relationship with the tree and then the tree becomes complete. And that is what we have to attempt. And the more we do it, when collectively you begin to do it, there will be a tremendous change in the way in which you teach your own subject. We'll gain some time and then introduce more and more topics which are actually 
How important is it to be happy for the child? Well, that's why we live. We live to be happy. So why can't we have a topic? Now, when we say topic, it's not with the idea of teaching. It is with the idea of facilitating. And you cannot facilitate it unless and until you have already have it, practiced it. And the more you do it, the easier. You become a walking fire. Anybody who interacts with you catches that fire. So the fiery material is already in the children. It needs the proximity of a living flame. And you walk and it becomes a wildfire. And that is what we would like our children to be. And when that child stands up against the world, and nobody is going to ask it what degree you have because he himself becomes a walking wildfire. He will bulldozer the world and he is meant to face the world. To dictate terms to the world, not to bow down and take everything couched down and we need to produce such children and the immense privilege that we have is there are so many things which need to be corrected at the mega multi level we need change in politics and uh, economics and management we can't go and change them all but if we produce children who have this kind of a sensitivity that care and compassion and also the capacity and when we send them out they will go to politics and change the politics. They will go to management and change the management. They will go to health sector and change the way health happens. That is the power that each one of you hold to create the future in the way in which we want to do. And the future is in the hands of these children. And these children are in whose hands? Such an immense privilege. What other job can make this happen? Just tell me. If you are a management guy, you can bring about a change only in the management field. But here is one field where you can change the whole world. You can transform the world as we know it. And that is how the possibility is immense. Are we up to it? Are we up to it? That's it. That's it. We don't know. It's an uncharted path. You can't come up with logical ans answers and then chuck out a path and then walk. But there is a light inside which will guide you. It will show you the path ahead of you and you just have to walk. And then you consult with people who have already walked there and they will give you a milestone. Hey, there, don't turn right, but turn left, you will have. So the people who turn right will have something and then they will come back. So the point is, and if you can take up that book on education, there are enough pointers over there. It becomes a book for life. You all have that book on education? Where the three principles and whatever else you might know comes from? There's a small book called On Education, 70 rupees. And probably, I might ask Pramanidhi to make copies available. First, you go through the book. And if you really feel that I should have this book, then only you go and purchase. This seems to be tough, that seems to be easy, but it's not that easy. That is I, what I feel so. We need to first agree that we need to change if we want to bring about a change. And that is not easy, believe me. And all of us understand that this is the need of the hour. We all want very good citizens. We all want an ideal student, an ideal child as a parent we want. But are we idle or not? That is what we need to accept first. And if we do that, I think we have already started on the right path. I would like to thank Shivda on behalf of all the teachers present here for giving so much food for thought. And I hope we'll be able to take it forward. As we're doing in the zero period, as Sandhama mentioned, we'll try to take it in a more positive way. Also, any opportunity for interacting with children, every moment outside of this, this, you teach that when the time but make yourself every second which is outside of it. Something beautiful will come.